Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Why faith? Why do we need faith in our lives? The Bible clearly tells us how that our walk is a faith walk from Genesis right to Revelation. We see that all those who were able to command results in their generation did so by faith. We are going to Hebrews shortly. But before that, I want us to look at two scriptures. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Why faith? Why do we need to talk on the subject of faith? Can you help us, media? That is possible. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. The B part is my verse of emphasis. And let's walk with King James. It says, Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Read on the B part. One to read. But the just shall live by his faith. So the subject of faith it's not just a subject of prosperity or breakthrough that you're living both in terms of the continuity of your breath and the quality of your life according to scripture four times interestingly in the bible four times the bible emphasizes that the just shall live by his faith we'll just look at two scriptures this is one habakkuk chapter two it says but the just shall live by in fact, he didn't just say faith. He said his faith. His faith. So we see that faith is necessary for both living and living victoriously. You may want to write that down. Faith is necessary for both living and living victoriously. You cannot live a victorious life in this kingdom outside of the operation of faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 There are four but we'll just look at one for the sake of time. Let's do that quickly please Hebrews 10 38 just the a part it says now the just when will the just live by faith? When will he live by faith? It says now the just shall live by faith then it says but if any man draw back back to what back from this principle of living it says my soul shall have no pleasure in him a very classical rendition of this was given to us in hebrews chapter 11 we're going to read it further when we read verse 6 the bible tells us just give us verse 6 but we'll later on start verse 1 hebrews 11 chapter and verse 6 please help us i like you to read it is projected one to read but without faith uh-huh stop that's what i want you to see it was buttressing on hebrews 10 38 that if any man draws back my soul will not have pleasure in him so it says but without faith that means outside of faith it is impossible to please god hallelujah so we see that the entire life of a believer revolves around faith. 
Now, many of us have had this teaching faith. We've had pastors. Some of us have taught it ourselves. But I think it's very important for us to settle down and really understand what faith is and how it works. We call all kinds of people men of faith. This person is a man of faith. What exactly is faith and how does it work? Seeing that the quality of our lives on earth is dependent on our understanding. Now listen please, not our application of faith alone, but our understanding of the same. You can apply something wrongly, dissipate so much energy, but it does not mean you are producing results. How many of you have seen cars that the exhaust has busted and I mean you hear the car coming so loud like a truck. You think it's a truck running without brake and then you see a little bike or a little car. That's how many people's destinies are. There's a lot of noise. And then when you look, you find out that there's absolutely nothing. But there are cars that would even come and park you, not even know. That's cars that came intentionally. I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. Prophesy to yourself. Yes, I'm on my way to paradise. No matter what I see around me now. I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way. So why faith? Hebrews chapter 11. It will be a long reading. It's an archive of men and women who demonstrated unto us the reality of faith. Let's read it. Please pay attention. We are studying the word of God tonight. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. It says, For by it, the elders obtain what? A good report. Next verse. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Now watch this. The Bible starts, we see certain formations happening. The Bible gives us a character of faith. Then we see certain people mentioned called elders. Are we together? Then we see a formation that faith is able to form realities. And then we see the word of God coming into the picture. Now, I want you to study how these realities begin to piece themselves. Faith, substance, evidence, report or results. Are we together? Understanding. The word of God. You see these things piecing up together. Then the Bible says, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4. Let's see how far we can go. Now, the first character in the Bible. The Bible calls them elders. Interestingly, the first elder in the Bible is called who? Not Adam. Not Cain. This is, this is a teaching on its own. I'm telling you, I like enjoying myself when I talk about these things. Believe you me, I plan to do the same this night. By faith, Abel did what? Offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice by faith than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. So by faith, a man offered unto God a what? More excellent sacrifice. Is it not interesting that the first thing God uses to describe faith is giving? 
We are going to lions. But the Bible talks of offering a more excellent sacrifice. It takes faith to be a giver. Cain gave, but he was a miser. And God said the reason why he mised was he did not have faith. Are we together? It was out of faith that Abel took sacrifice as though that was all he had and gave unto God. Meaning greed. Listen. Selfishness of all sorts is traceable to what? Lack of faith. That at any point in a man's life, he is a withholder and not a giver. I don't mean money. A giver of anything. It is because of fear of the continuity of the supply. And the Bible says it's lack of faith. Number two, five. By faith, the second elder we see in the Bible is who? Now, Enoch was the seventh man from creation, theologically speaking. Enoch was the seventh man from creation. And then from Abel, he just jumps to Enoch and says, by faith, Enoch was what? Translated. 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 Kabarato satire. By faith, a man can leave a level to another. By faith. I know this is talking of translation out of this realm, but you need to understand what this meant. Enoch translated from one territory to another by faith. Like a man can leave poverty to wealth. Like a man can leave sickness. It says if you want to experience translation, it will happen how? By faith. That he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had a testimony. Notice how pleasing God is tied to faith. It seems like God's obsession is not just praise and worship. God's obsession is that he can find men who have faith in him. Every time you see the manifestation of faith, you see God smiling. The Bible gives you a picture that he's happy. He's well pleased. Number three. And without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe. That he is. The word is there means he exists. He exists. And then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hear what the Bible says. For everyone that seeketh findeth. It's important we get this foundation. Seven. Let's see how far we go. By faith. Noah comes in now. Noah. Kalabakotaya. Be warned of God of things not seen as yet. When God was warning Noah, there was no evidence that those things were coming. The same way God is saying you will prosper and there is no evidence. But Noah moved in advance. He didn't wait to say, let me see a cloud first. He started building the ark when the sun was shining bright and Bible calls it fate. Now, I hope you... Those who did mathematics, everybody did mathematics. Whether you like it or not. I'm not asking you whether you passed. I'm saying you did it. Are we together? Now listen. A good teacher does not give two examples and set examples. No. When they give you, especially a difficult aspect of mathematics, they give you as many examples. And those examples have variations of the way the underlying principles are applied. Is that true? Uh -huh. It's supposed to help you familiarize you with the different ways. This is what the Bible is doing. We're working maths here. Are we together? So the Bible begins to give you different people. Do you know everything the Bible is saying about them is the same? He's only using different human examples to show you different applications. How men maneuvered circumstances by faith. So, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, not seen as yet, moved with fear. The word fear there is reverence. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. 100 years, it took Noah to build an ark. How many years have you waited for your miracle? Let me hear it, please. Six months. And you're already saying, Lord, if by November... A man moved by faith for 100 years. 
How long do you have to live on earth to spend 100 years building an ark? I'm sure the children, when they gave birth to their children, they said, we, we grew up seeing our grandfather. What exactly is this project? And Noah said, the rain will come. And the children said, well, I'm now a teenager. I, I believe the rain will come. And God kept watching and says it was by faith. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to break down faith for you to really understand. And then you will know that many people really do not believe in God. Many of you at the end of this teaching, you will tell God, I'm sorry. Because you will find out that you really should not receive a result. Amen. Next verse. By faith. Now Abraham comes in. I like the Bible. How many people now? Abel, help me. Enoch, uh-huh. Noah, Abraham. It says by faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place, that means your destiny must be fulfilled by faith. God called a man. Are you seeing now? So we see by faith to do different things. Translation. Now we are seeing he's talking about destiny here. An inheritance. By faith. You are not the first person to graduate and wonder what to do with your life. There was a man in the awe of the Chaldeans. Awe of the Chaldeans called Abraham. And the Bible says when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive an inheritance obeyed he says and he went out help me please that's the faith part of it not knowing whither he went go to lagos yes lord what are you doing in lagos obeying god you are stupid god what do you say you are a man of faith abraham don't turn there genesis 22 Genesis 12. Come out of your father's house and out of your kindred and out of all of these. Listen, to a land that I will show you. No name. The assignment is follow me. And the Bible says Abraham gathered his house and says, Gentlemen, we're off. Let's go. May you surround people in your life who can let you obey God. Yeah. There are times, let me just say this in advance. There are times certain people will love you too much to allow you obey God especially for we young people because our parents many of them even those who were not born again walked by faith are we together the last time their father saw them was from one they used to call it from one the next time the person came he came with the lady he would marry a master's holder how he survived the father did not know one heavy box and a blessing. Don't drink, don't follow women, be hard working. The God that kept me keep you. Enter a boat and go. And the father had confidence that the boy will not die. After eight years, he now came back and said, Daddy, God is faithful. I now have a house, a car. How did it happen? By faith. But now, you see someone of 30, they say, I think you should start settling. I say, hey, mommy, I will take it gently. Just buy me blanket, buy me sugar, buy me tea. Don't laugh. We have been so pampered that the system of faith is eroding our minds. So whenever we say faith, many people just laugh. That's the reason why there are very few people who really do much i'm not even talking ministry in the kingdom in our lives this over pampering are we together now auxiliary faith okay uncle i'll take the first step but make sure you are standing by look at what he told peter he said fear not jesus speaking it is i and peter said if it be thou bid me come jesus said come faith faith Let's read to verse 10. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him, with him of the same promise. Uh -huh. For he looked for a city whose builder and maker is who? The Lord. Next verse. Through faith, 
the first woman now also an elder the first woman through faith Sarah herself received what so how do men receive strength in the kingdom you don't receive strength in the kingdom just by eating a good meal although that is important she received strength and conceived seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful now notice that among all these people the common denominator is that they did or said something are we together there was nobody whose testimony was just passive the bible tells us something they did something they said something they did something they said let me say this up front faith is not hearing what god has said faith is fulfilling your own path your own path Let's go to verse 17. I want to jump. Verse 17. Are we together? By faith, Abraham now, when he was tested, did what? Or tried. Offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Sacrifice by faith. Sacrifice by faith. Now the Bible talks of Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Let's go to 23 and look at Moses. The Bible dwells for, I don't know why, but it seems to me like Moses was the person the Bible dwelt so much in. All of the people who the Bible talked about faith, even Abraham, who we call to be the father of faith, the Bible just spoke about him. But for Moses, the Bible seemed to dwell and talk a lot about Moses, which I found interesting. Let's read on. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was did what? Was he three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's command? You understand the act of faith. They put him in a basket and pushed him to the Nile, trusting God to take care of him. Next verse. Then by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called what? Refused to be called by faith. Just like you refuse to be called um, any name that seems derogatory, any name that comes from a background that can destroy you. Oh, you are all the poor ones. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said by faith, seeing something, he refused. Choosing rather, think about this, to suffer affliction. Listen, there are certain kinds of afflictions that the Bible says you must go through them by faith. It's a choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When a lady refuses to say yes to an unbeliever, and instead of marrying two years before that time, now remains single because she refused to say yes to an unbeliever by faith, waiting for a godly man she believes to be her husband. The Bible calls it to suffer affliction. Not every act of faith looks pleasant in the process. In fact, let me tell you something. A major part of the journey of faith will make you look stupid because you are forfeiting, we call it in economics, opportunity cost. You forgo something for the excellency of what is waiting for you. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what? A season. 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ 
greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward and so on and so forth and um, let me look for somewhere now I mean the Bible talks about him right well let's read let's read really let's read down to um, 30 where it goes to Joshua now we're reading down to 30 you see how much a lot was talked about Moses by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible 28 we are reading down to 30 through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the destroyer now the firstborn should touch them 29 this is the last of the talk about Moses by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do the Egyptians tried it but they didn't do it by faith so they died are you seeing now now let's talk of the wall of Jericho verse 30 by faith the walls of Jericho did what not by strength by faith we saw them going around walking around Jericho are you understanding the character of faith already every one of these people did something whoever tells you faith happens without your commitment lied to you I'm showing you all through the common denominator to all these things is that they believed God and there was a demand on their own part to respond by saying by doing by keeping their own part so their obedience upgraded the promises of God to a covenant the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days read 31 by faith ah, yeah, yeah, the second woman look at the name the Bible calls her now this is interesting why didn't he just say by faith Rahab I think we are smart enough to know then he says by faith Kalabakata a woman who was a harlot changed her story by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not meaning she was part of them she was destined to perish please is that true what is the wages of sin help me what is the wages of sin that means there is a system in God where men can change prophecy there is a system in God where men can alter obvious consequences the key is faith if first tells you her credentials she was a harlot do you know what it means to earn a right to stay on a wall so that whoever is passing sees you before even seeing the king by faith she changed her report everyone died in Jericho except Rahab not only did she not die she forced herself into the genealogy of Jesus when she had received the spies with peace and what more can I say I really wonder what more do you need to hear you, you see I'm understanding what Paul is saying Paul is saying if by now you don't see the synergy what more can I say he says for time would do what to fail me to talk of others there were other elders in the Bible let's name them Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets there were many next verse who did what through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness uh -huh, obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions next verse quench the violence of fire look at that i wonder why nigerian actors have never acted a film this powerful men who did this by faith produce a film and call it by faith exploits in the spirit they escaped the edge of the sword men who looked at death eyeball to eyeball 
and say you will not kill me and then the bible now says out of weakness were made what men who were born weak but refused that they will not die weak works valiant in fight turn to flight the armies of the aliens then listen to this women receive their dead raised back to life and then the bible quickly puts a very strange balance it says and others were tortured not accepting that means they did not die out of the power of death conquering them the bible says they rejected deliverance willingly they discovered in their knowledge of god that to die is gain and they said i can live but let me prove to god how much i trust him and they said it is within my power to command deliverance but i reject it faith it did say they died out of weakness please don't confuse this they died they had do you know there are many people today who died when we get to heaven they will tell you they were offered an opportunity to live but they saw something higher and they said let's go the bible calls it faith now you mourn them and try to look for hilarious stories but they are they have joined those elders it's a list it's a roll call there are many people shortlisting themselves there it says not accepting deliverance that they may do what obtain a better resurrection i'm going somewhere with all this and you will soon see next verse and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings you are not the first to be laughed at are we together yea moreover of bonds and of imprisonment imprisonment they were stoned and they were sown asunder now you don't like this koinonia is quiet but the bible tells you beforehand that these men had the power they were not helpless bible history makes it look like they were helpless the bible says they they had the power to command deliverance but they saw something higher and by faith they stood they were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world, there are such men that the world was not worthy of. They walked upon the earth. Have you been given something that you say is a privilege? There are men who they are walking upon the earth, is a blessing to the earth. The Bible says it's a privilege. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. 39. I want you to read 39 and the next verse, I believe, verse 40. Am I, am I right? Yes, 39 and 40. Read it with all your heart and your spirit. Ready? One to read. And these all, uh huh having obtained a good report through faith receive not what now read on next verse god having provided some better thing for us that they without us there is a dimension of the manifestation of faith that god is trusting our generation to reveal and the bible calls it the perfection of all these elders as great as their exploits are and were the bible says that god had provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect now theologically speaking there's been two schools of thoughts just explaining this scripture a lot of people mean this to be the dispensation of grace because you would notice that all the people who were communicated were largely old testament people are we together now and so the better promises that many people think uh they say that it is because these people suffered in the dispensation of the lord the old testament and now we have access to grace the substitutionary work of christ now that is true but i don't believe that is all are we together that is true but the death of christ in itself afforded us a higher platform to manifest faith 
Are we together? Mm. An example of such opportunities is the possibility to live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, this was a possibility they did not experience. But that a man can tap into a higher frequency of faith called the faith of the Son of God. Not just your faith, the faith of the Son of God. You can bring God's faith to an operation and get results. This is a better promise. But that's not what we are talking about. I'm showing you men who did strange things through faith. And so if you and I must make impact in our generation, it will have to be how? By faith, through faith, by faith, through faith. So how are you going to build that house? How are you going to change the story of your family? By faith. How are you going to get out of that sickness and infirmity? Please understand what I'm saying. There is the chronicles of ordinary men who dare to believe God and change a lot of things. So faith is, is, is important to please God. And we have a testament of men and women who walked by faith. The next thing I want us to look at Is the word of God let's look at the word of God being that this is the instrument that produces faith it is important for us to look at the character and I'll be very brief the character of the word of God write this down please the word of God whether spoken or written the word of God whether spoken or written contains the life of God the word of God whether whether spoken or written contains the life of God the word of God, whether written or spoken, contains the life of God. Number two, write it. The word of God is a representation of his commitment to man. The word of God is a representation. I want you to write this. We are looking at the character. A representation of his commitment to man. Like you have a covenant, like you have a contract between two people. So the testament of his commitment to man. Number three. The word of God represents his will for man. Now this is important. We are going to dwell a little here. The word of God represents his will. Comes from the Greek word logos. Where we get the word word. Logos the thoughts of a man the will of a man the intention of a man so the word of god represents his intention his will his will it's a legal term his will for man number four the word of god is the basis the basis for contact with man the word of God is the basis for contact with man. I'm giving you certain characters of the word of God as far as the manifestation of faith is concerned. The word of God is the basis for contact with man. That means that the Holy Spirit remains helpless until the word of God creates the platform for contact with man. Number five, the word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. The word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. God is moved to the feelings of our infirmities but not to action. The word of God 
is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. Write this down. The word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. The word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. Also contains principles. Are we getting blessed? Now please look up everyone. Please look up. Now there's been a lot of argument in the body of Christ as to whether this should be called the word of God. The word Bible comes from the word Biblios and that just means a book. Nothing special really. It just means a book. Are we together? Now theologically speaking for many years in the church age they did not have a compendium of 66 books like this. There are other schools of thought that argue how that there are many chapters and verses that are missing in the Bible. There are many chapters and verses that were added that should not have been in the Bible. Are we together now? And how that there are other books of the Bible. Like there are arguments about the apocryphal books, the apocrypha, the Roman Catholics use that a lot. And then there are other books, the books of Jasha. There are other books called the Annals of the Kings. There is the book of Enoch. Are we together now? Now all these books together have been argued by theologians. Some of them believe that it should be contained since the character of scripture is that all scripture was inspired of God. Are we together? And that anything that is of God should give spirit and life. So I'm, I'm just giving you an educational background on this so that you will understand. So there has been a lot of argument. In fact, currently, um, I know that there was a time certain, uh, I think a Rab Rabonical Association also came up with certain things and they felt that a lot should be edited in scripture. Now the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Say Hebrew. And the uh, the New Testament was written largely in Greek and Aramaic. Are we together? Now, these people wrote these scriptures, but they were not in charge of its translation. There's no point to give you the whole story of Bible history, how that this translation were in bits and pieces. Some of these pages were missing for many years, and then they were found together with what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. And then it was at the time of King James, King James. He was a real king, ancient king called King James. Not ancient like modern history now, King James, who authorized the publication of a compendium of these 66 books that we call the Bible. Are, are we together now? So all the 66 books, Old and New Testament together are called. Now, I'm not, the point of all of this is not to create a debate about other extra biblical texts or some exaggerations that were done here that's not the idea one thing we know for sure is this listen every man who contributed in the writing of this was imperfect as a person that means if god allowed them to still rob their imperfection it means the mystery is not in the letters are you getting what i'm saying now please you must understand what i'm teaching you we're examining faith Elijah was a temperous man. The Bible is a compendium of many things. Demons spoke in this Bible. Is that true? Donkeys spoke in this Bible. Are we together? Men spoke in this Bible. People lied in this Bible. People used divination in this Bible. So the fact that it is written here does not automatically mean it is of God. You have to get this. So when the Bible or when we talk about the word of God, we are not talking about just the opening of anything because you see we must balance this there are believers who say if you can show me in the bible i will do it that means you are going to get into error the, the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want there are herbalists today when you enter their shrine you see other books and you see a very clean bible there are we together and they will read the scripture and instruct you based on that scripture and because it is in the bible you will believe i should walk no so i want us to examine what the word of god is listen to my message uh i think the living logos 
I had done a teaching years ago on that. What exactly is the word of God? Because none of the apostles in the early church, in fact, even up till um, Emperor, Emperor Nero, Constantine, and all of these people, they never had the opportunity to hold the Bible like this. It was a taboo. They were kept in temples. Are we together? And then, of course, when the people of God were caught in different kinds of captivities, they were hidden and taken from place to place to arrive like this as a compendium. A lot happened to them. Are we together? But the Bible says, let the word of Christ, Colossians 3 verse 16, dwell in you richly. So I want to ask you a question. How did the disciples grow in the word? When Jesus resurrected, I want you to go back to the book of Acts. When an average believer got up in the morning, what did he study? And how did he study? Are we together? You would only go to the temple. We do it in the Anglican. For those of us who are inclined Anglican and maybe Presbyterians to do this, they have what we call first reading and second reading. Is that true? Where you come up, you read, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then, you know, that continues and then there are parts uh, where you recite you know the the apostles creed and so on and so forth like that now other pentecostal circles do not have the privilege of having that kind of thing you just come you preach and then you end this was how it was in jewish temples the priest one of the all of those people would come up and give you one of the scrolls they had messages for every time so you would read it and roll it back and, and keep it and then they could preach from it they could speak for it and, and so on and so forth now if you don't understand this that I'm teaching three things will happen to you number one you can fall into the error of absorbing the letters blindly and believing that you are growing in the word because you are consuming these letters that's the first error or number two you can just say since this is not the word of God let me throw it away and destroy your spiritual life there are people today now you know i was talking with a few people and they were talking to me and said look the use of ipad and, and now please i don't have if you are using devices here that's the, the the goal is not to to um um discredit you on all of that we're in the 21st century but I think a, a group of gentlemen were talking to me and they said, Apostle, what is your take on the use of iPad as far as the revelation of the word of God we have is concerned? Because, because our concept of scripture is that I'm holding a book. A man of God even said in Revelations, God told John, write, not type. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, see, personally, I honestly, I honestly believe. You see, there's something about holding this thing. <laughs> there is a chemistry between the letters of this book and your eyes. I, I absolutely believe that. But I don't have a problem. I mean, I have all kinds of things. We use it on our devices, phones, laptops, and, and whatever you have. What is the word of God? Write this down. Let's define what the word of God is. Since this is the instrument for producing faith, write this down. The word of God is any communication. The word of God is any communication or any platform. Any communication or any platform where the voice of God, the ways of God, write it down, where the voice of God, the ways of God, and the life of God can be accessed. The word of God is any communication or any platform where the voice of God, please listen, the ways of God and what? The life of God can be. That means what I am speaking to you now. If it contains the voice of God. 
if it contains listen the ways that is the principles of god and if it is capable of releasing the life of god what is this called the word of god meaning as i'm speaking to you now what i am saying is worthy of being written here the only thing is that i was not part of those who were specifically you know brought together to make the 66 books god's idea is not for us to be limited by 66 books god's idea is that our lives become a continuation of the books that are written here are, are we together so god's ultimate goal is not for you to be sound in scripture but that you become it an expression that's why the bible says we are living epistles say living epistles so that look at how it is if you read something like verily verily i say unto you the words that i speak listen they are spirit and they are life are we together god's idea is not just for me to read it but become that scripture so that whoever does not have an opportunity and left his bible at home can also read it in me are you getting the point so imagine every believer like a page in the scripture releasing certain possibilities men were not supposed to know god just by reading the bible they were supposed to know god by interacting with the church so that way before anybody opens this book he should open the book and say oh so this is an explanation so this attitude is called kindness are you getting what i'm saying ah uh, some of you are lost let's come again i want to deliver you from religion listen 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 the power is not just in cramming scriptures the power is in the words that are written here that the holy spirit can use this word to forge something upon your spirit so that you become an expression of it not just a talker of it and that's where we destroy ourselves the word of god is not greek the word of god is not hebrew listen the word of god is not english the word of god is any platform for accessing him listen if there is a way i can make this become the voice of god and a platform to speak a particular scripture within the period of that miracle this is the word of god how do i teach this now help me holy spirit if i prophesy to you and i say hey, Jimmy, may the lord bless you and it happens do you know what why it happened because what i have spoken is the word of god it was a platform where the life of god could flow to him if i use oil to lay on your head the oil works because the word of god is on it so the word of god is not the right things about god the right things about god how many of you know granite now this bible is like the granite the real granite do you just eat the thing like that you open it but you cannot access what is inside until you come to it are you getting what i'm saying see brothers and sisters that is why many people read this but they cannot get faith i'm going to show you something how faith comes but we must understand the character and the word of god i read a lot i study the bible but i have the consciousness that i am an expression of the word of god are we together now so when you come to me i don't run and open the bible and say this verse is this verse that uh -uh. that i left my bible at home does not mean the word of god is at home the word of god is living and active it's your bible i'm, I'm teaching you your bible see i'm showing you why we don't get results i can hold this against a witch and put it under my bed and snore myself into a terrible drip 
are we together i may think that because this was under my pillow it does not have any power in itself the power is released listen when this is studied by faith by faith means that you believe that although these are letters the spirit of god can breathe upon this this is what logos you see the word logos and rema that people are speaking rema is not just the revealed word rema is when the breath of the spirit comes upon this letter it's like the breaking of the ground not seed and all of a sudden you can receive it so you don't need to recite the scripture you only need to have the life thereof the recitation of the scripture is to add to your excellence in communication and to strengthen your conviction it is not the recitation in my name they shall cast out devils jesus did not say if you stand before people the name he said is not jesus we mentioned jesus so that they will know that the office we are acting upon is the christ the name is not jesus the name is lord and lord is a revelation it means absolute master sovereign controller so i look at a spirit i'm not speaking but i'm casting him in the name of jesus the name of jesus is not a recitation in the name of j-e-s-u-s -E be healed no the name of jesus is an office So whether I am talking or not is still the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Jesus meets somebody, a madman in Gadara. The demons beg him and beg him and say, don't cast out. What did he say? Go. Now that word go, you say it and it may not work. Because the go is not just G-O. The go was simply an, a voice activated communicator of the word of God. Whatever he said, even if he said come, they still would have gone. It's not, it's not like they needed intelligent English because they, they spoke good English. The demons say we understand. No. Please don't be excited for nothing. I really want you to get this thing. Are we together? The word of God is not just about your voice. The word of God is about an understanding that makes you become a platform for his life. So as I am walking now, I'm giving the word of God expression. If I happen to open my mouth and speak to you, I have given the word of God more expression. That is the reason why a donkey could still communicate the word of God. That is why handkerchiefs and aprons, they were taken. Could the handkerchief speak? They could not speak, but they were going by the word of God. Jesus sent men in his name. They were not born again, yet they returned with results. They said the demons were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Why do we study the Bible? Write this quickly. We study the Bible for three major reasons. Number one, we study the Bible because contained in the Word of God, contained in the Bible as we know. Now I can call it interchangeably the Word of God, you understand. The Bible contains the most accurate dealing of God with man. The Bible contains the most accurate dealing of God with man. We study it because it's the most accurate historical compendium of God's dealing with man. There are many history books, but the Bible gives us the most accurate compendium, historically speaking, of God's dealings with man. Number two, the Bible contains principles, promises, prophecies from God to man. The Bible contains principles, promises, prophecies from God to man. So we study so that we can have an understanding of these things. Number three. We 
we study the bible because it is the only book we study the bible because it is the only book that can authorize the holy spirit to make manifest what is written therein we study the bible because it is the only book that can authorize the spirit of god or the holy spirit to make manifest the things that are written therein no other spirit is legally authorized to manifest everything written here now it does not mean other spirits cannot manifest what is written here but only the holy ghost is authorized to back up to make manifest meaning listen listen meaning if i read the bible and i see by his stripes i am healed now listen when the word of god contained is released in my spirit because of this book is giving me access to that word of god now the holy spirit is authorized to make real that which i have believed from the book are you getting what i'm saying now a time is going to come maybe not in this current church age but a time is going to come we are not going to read this again i hope you know <laughs> yeah a time will come we will not read this but we'll continue growing in the word a time is going to come we will not read this again it's not heresy it will not be in this dispensation the book of revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation we do not yet know what will happen therein the same way before our time it was only from acts chapter one you know when the church was born and now our dispensation has had the privilege of access to read this are we together other saints believers still in our dispensation did not read this yet the word of god was mighty in them for instance apollos the bible says he was even mighty in scripture this is where we miss it we read the letters and ben Hadad, the king of syria gathered all the hosts together gather me oh god gather me gather me oh god you see now listen listen that looks very sincere but the word of god is not on that statement i'm being careful so you don't feel offended but it's the truth i want to teach you how faith works do you know for many years i really didn't understand how faith worked until one time i i took out i studied almost 11 people those who represented men of faith from bishop oyedeko to kenneth copeland and his wife to dr frederick casey price to all of the men hallmarks of faith ew kenyon i sat down with these people and i started seeing it i said so this is where we're missing it we recite scriptures and believe that the recitation is where the power is released no sir are we together am i discrediting the reading of the word of god of course not of course not you can see how old this bible is it was not like that something made it so it's called diligence diligence until the bible you you see it i don't know how many times i've laminated this bible again and again I've read it to a point that the pages, I can close my eyes. You say, Matthew, okay, I mean, Isaiah, I wanted to try, you know, I can literally open any page everywhere is marked up and down. So I believe it. But I found out that many of us keep accumulating this. And then we wonder why things are not working for us. The word of God is the spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. Whether released by the reading of these letters or communicated through the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes. Now let's discuss faith. We're back to faith. Romans 10, 19. Romans 10, 17. Is God helping us tonight? I'm working this thing with us because I want us to understand faith. We are going to pray. Romans 10, 19. Read it please. 10, 17. One to read. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Now, the word hearing, let me correct two things. The word hearing, the first hearing, is a very broad word. It does not just mean faith comes by using your ears. Are we together? The word hearing is a very broad word. And there are many synonyms you can add to it. Number one is perception. 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 Faith comes by perceiving. Not just hearing with the ear alone like speaking to you physically. Faith comes by perception because when you read your Bible, you don't hear anything. Correct? You don't hear what you read like this. You can hear through your ears. And remember, even about hearing, the Bible says, he that has an ear. Meaning not everybody has this kind of ear. Are we together? So, the first hearing there means perception. Any platform that can create perception. It's not just limited to hearing. And then the second hearing there means understanding or comprehension. I want you to correct that. Not necessarily in your Bible. I'm not saying it's wrong. So faith comes by perceiving and understanding and that by the word of God. That's how faith comes. When you just read it and it says hearing and hearing, there is a dimension of application. It means listening again and again and that can help. But the accurate picture is perception and understanding. Everybody say perception. Say understanding. The second hearing there is understanding understandest what thou readest on that was where the problem was the utopian enoch he was not reading he was reading but understandest what thou readest perception so when i'm studying the word of god the bible now and i'm reading it the moment perception can come out of it the word of god has come into my spirit i don't have to hear now when i'm listening to bible on tape or hearing a preacher teach like this and the word of god comes it is still hearing so when we say hearing i don't just mean your ears your ears your eyes your dreams your visions any platform that can create perception can impart faith mm. listen listen there are people who have had dreams and got up from those dreams are we together and took certain actions those dreams brought solid conviction to their lives i shared with you about the encounter that i had with jesus christ now that encounter is not written in the bible that joshua Selman will have an encounter but in that encounter i told you jesus did not speak to me he never opened his mouth to speak yet he spoke so many things i left that encounter full of faith and stephen full of faith where did he read anything that we see faith there Do not limit your Bible study to just hearing and reading. Any platform that creates the perception of the word can release faith. So the first is perception. The most common platform of perception is hearing your ears. Because you hear sounds. Sounds. So as I'm speaking to you now, if you cover your ears, it's difficult for you to read my lips. Do you know why I'm speaking this to you? How do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith how do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith if someone is blind if someone is deaf if someone is dumb are you saying faith cannot come to him are we together you see people go to crusade grounds completely deaf Meaning as a man of God is preaching, other people are jumping. They themselves are not even following. Yet at the end, they are healed. And we are going to be finding out later that their faith healed them. So how did it come? Question two. A dead man who cannot breathe, cannot talk, cannot do anything. How does he come back to life? What is the principle of resurrection? And then, how did the bones of Elijah, not breathing, still transfer the anointing to somebody? Everybody say the word of God. That thing you call the bones of Elijah was the word of God. Any platform 
that can release the life of God. Thank you, Jesus. Say after me, the word of God is not limited to my hearing. Thank you. The word of God is not limited to my hearing alone. The word of God can come into my spirit through any mechanism that can create perception and understanding. Are you getting what I'm saying? Meaning the word of God can come to you through a Christian music. Now you are listening to a song. Play something. Play what you are playing. Watch this. Listen. If this guy is anointed. Hallelujah. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. Thank you. Look at what this guy is playing. Play it. Are you hearing any words? English. Is there Hebrew? Is there your language? I want to follow me carefully. Are we together? Now, but you see the anointing that is released from this. I can put the word of God on this sound now and you will see miracles happening. Are you getting it now? <laughs> I can put it by saying. Then this now, the sound that leaves this keyboard does not become an ordinary sound. It becomes the word of God. Why? A platform that can release the life of God. The power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You will hear it. And somebody now will come under the anointing. And you are wondering the operation of the word of God. This is ordinary keyboard. That's how you can be listening to worship in your room. And faith is rising. You are not exactly reading any scripture per se. Yet faith is rising. Because through it the word of God is coming. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of God. The word of God is at work in me. The presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. Is a sign that I was born of the word. If you are not born of the word. He cannot come. Because he comes in response to the word. So I am born of the word of God. New life is in me. So the Holy Spirit is comfortable to live in me. Are we together? And every time that spirit and life is in me, he can release what is being said. Now I can speak it to happen, but I don't have to speak it alone to happen. I just need to create a platform for it to happen. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you believe this, you will know why we pray for the sick. Not necessarily having to say, be healed. You just touch them. And you're saying, sir, you see some, somebody who tried to say, here, this is where the pain is. And you are touching his head. How does touching the head heal pain at the back? Is the word of God. You are only placing the word of God on them. So you have become an expression of the word. The word became flesh. That's what you have now become. So you are not only reading scripture. You are the word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. When you play keyboard, you transfer the word of God to it. This is what is called the ministration of life. The ministration of life. You are transferring life. You are transferring life to that word. Are, are we together now? So, when you put the word of God upon this now, deliverance begins to happen. Healings begin to happen. A sinner can sit down. That's why people come for concerts. And at the end of it, you make an altar call and they come out. You didn't teach John 3 16 but the word of God convicted them because it came from the music I want you to understand faith I really want you to understand faith this may look complicated but as we continue you will see how it ties up it will make your life powerful I don't move around hoping that demons will respond to my quoting of scripture I know a lot of scripture to the glory of God but I am a life-giving spirit I am a life-giving spirit. My body has become a communicator of the word of God. The spirit and the life of God. So if I shake you, for instance, shake me, Femi. If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. Are you seeing that? If I shake you, 
I release the life and the power of God. You may be sick, I may not know. But as soon as I leave you, you find out I've been healed. Now, I did not ask you whether you are sick. The word of God saw a need. And because I have become the word of God, it feels it immediately. Are we together? Say I'm a manifestation of the word of God. Please, I want you to say it. I am a manifestation of the word of God. Say this, my goal for studying scripture, my goal for studying scripture is not just to be learned, but to be an expression of the word of God. My goal for studying scripture is not just to have head knowledge. It's not just to be learned, but to be a walking Bible. So when men look at your life, they can read a scripture immediately through your life. Living epistles. We fool ourselves in the body of Christ that because we have finished the Bible cover to cover, and by God's grace I've done this many times, so we say, I've read the Bible cover to cover. If I'm a man of God, as I'm speaking, the Bible says, blah, blah, blah. And, and once they are talking, these spirits are saying, my God, these guys don't even know what the word of God is. We fool ourselves and at the end of it, nothing happens. Are we together? And then somebody comes with a saxophone or a guitar and starts playing. Anywhere you see the manifestation of the power of God, the word of God must have preceded it. Because the Holy Spirit is not authorized to manifest when the word of God has not gone ahead. So when you see the word of God moving, when you see the Holy Spirit moving, he's confirming the word. Confirming the word. Whether spoken or revealed. The manifestation of the word of God. The manifestation of the word of God I tell you as I as I speak this thing you see sometimes because we are talking about the word of God and we are dividing it accurately to open up these things the Spirit of God let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit the moment you begin to communicate the word of God very accurately it's like his body is itching him he wants to move he wants to confirm it I'm telling you how to confirm the word it's not Holy Spirit move move that's not it let the word of God be communicated accurately and it's like it's like he cannot I'm not talking of just shaking under the anointing I'm talking of signs and wonders and miracles you place the word of God upon everything the word of God is on the air the word of God is on your chair everything that can communicate the word of God that's what makes the anointing when the word of God saturates a place, the Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. The Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. If the word goes to your kidney, he's following it there. If the word goes to your academics, he's following it there. If the word goes to your business, you don't get the Holy Spirit to move outside the word of God. It's witchcraft. So send the word of God and the Holy Spirit follows the word. Are we together? You send the word of God and the spirit moves in that direction. So if I declare that I prophesy to your finances, if the Holy Spirit does not back that, then it was not the word of God. Even if I quote scripture, are we together? So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that the word of God has been released in a place. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that his word has been released we pride ourselves with theological knowledge we pride ourselves with knowledge of scriptures john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world but it's not the word of god so the holy spirit cannot back it please hear what i'm teaching you the holy spirit only comes to the scene when the word of god is released whether through speaking or through any platform including your body being a manifestation so when you want to see the energy of the spirit released then be sure that what you are speaking or doing is the word of God are you getting what I'm saying now mm. if it's not the word of God you are not going to get the Holy Spirit there please hear me the degree to which we have seen the miraculous is the extent to which the word of God has come out 
so you can speak 100 words only 20 of them are the word of god the holy spirit backs only 20 percent of your communication are you getting what i'm saying this is the difference between what we call anointed people they may not have all the verses but their bodies have become greater platforms to release the word of god so the holy spirit in answer to the word confirms them are we together I'm a carrier of the word of God not just by cramming scriptures I have read it but the word of God flows through me like water the spirit and the life of God I understand the principles as I walk in the consciousness of that principle and with the understanding every time I utter my word or respond in any direction as the Holy Spirit would direct that's what we call faith I will tell you what faith is now faith is your response to and from the word of God not just scriptures your response to the word of God so you have to make it be sure that what you are responding to is not just scripture but the word of God and it is called faith and that faith will bring performance more on that next week I'm not talking so much about I need you to understand the word of God so that when we begin to teach on the dynamics the operation of faith you will know why certain things are not happening in our lives our idea of faith largely has been correct assimilation of scripture correct recitation of the same and then expectation in hope that something will happen it will never work that way are we together John 3 16 for this and that and that and that happened for we know the grace of our Lord that though he was poor yet he became rich so that we through his poverty might be, and we wrap it and we say Lord this is your word respond and say no it is true that I spoke that through the servants but you are only speaking scripture theologically listen let me tell you if the word of God was just scripture then the scribes should be have been the greatest carriers of the word they knew the entire Pentateuch of heart and Jesus looked at them and said ye are not knowing the scripture he said you search the scripture for a thing in them you will find life and you will not come to me listen if Jesus appears here and somebody is writing a book the Bible says scripture testified of him is that true scripture listen if you are writing a book about me and I show up who is a more authentic medium are you getting what I'm saying now so the scribes had head knowledge that prophesied about Jesus when Jesus came they said no Jesus we don't want you but we want the scrolls and he said you are hypocrites you read the scrolls they talk about me now you're reading I am here as the word become flesh you are rejecting me yet you are doing Bible study and Jesus said you are hypocrites are we together but a woman just ran and said thou I mean blind but if I may but touch the hem of who the word of God she perceived she didn't read anywhere but she saw men looking and she said I have heard and something has happened in my spirit I perceive and I understand that this man has power to heal there is nowhere in scripture where she read that you should take a step of faith she created an action based on her perception God honored that action and she was healed I'll teach you that next week don't take action until you perceive and understand the word you will be wasting your time so we take many steps do you know people can come and stand here with their tight frowning no perception no discernment no understanding all these men of God am I sure a Jimmy's tie I'm looking at this tie I hope it's not my money that is going to buy another tie and you are there grumbling and arguing and you drop that and the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin now, men of God will not tell you that because they need the money so they'll say no problem unbelief or not that's your business just drop it let's use it but I'm telling you the sincere truth it must be by faith so here's what the Bible says Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 give it to us please goodness Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 I want us to read it now you will understand all that I've taught you 
there is a protocol to faith ready one to read <laughs> but without faith it is impossible to please him full stop whoever wants to be a man of faith what is the first step it says for he that comes to God must believe not his word leave the issue of manifestation you must believe that he exists it your perception must on you must understand the person you are dealing with the integrity of his person and his ability to provide for you number one then number two that he's a rewarder that he's a rewarder there are two things god wants to be known for to release faith one that he exists his existence means a lot because if he exists then he's mighty if he exists then he can hear my god's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion there's a song like that have you read have you listened to that song do you believe god is alive i know you will say yes your life does not show it are we together because if you believe it will compel you to take action look at me listen do you believe there is water on this table do you believe do you believe now you can come and carry it do you believe there is water on this table yes you will not come and carry it because you consider it to be a waste of time so do you believe there is god yes so you can relate to him this is why people do not pray they don't believe god is alive let me tell you the truth the revelation behind the life of prayer is not religious struggles it's not an attempt to compete with people i pray for eight hours you pray for six hours all that is junk prayer is predicated upon an understanding that unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come after the service people are going to be waiting here queuing right to the back because you believe i'm not going what if i just i use style and just run out if i do that for three weeks you will stop standing here because it's a sign that you doubt my ability the first doubt of believers is not even in the power of god to produce that result it's even his existence i know you think this thing i'm telling you is powerful the word of god is guiding us here do you believe God exists? It's a very big deal. I've given my life to him. No problem. Do you believe he exists? He's alive. He's alive. Sing it. He's alive forever. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. He's alive. Amen. Do you know why every time you visit a herbalist, you must live with a charm? You don't visit whether that charm is a goat or is something, you must live with. We call them tokens tokens are representations of the existence of something are we together so you go to him i must marry that man put him in a bottle for me and then they carry his picture throw it in a bottle and lock it correct and give you say hide it somewhere for as long let me tell you the devil does not need that bottle he needs your faith and since your faith must be tied on something he gave you a bottle. Let me tell you why it still works. Even if you are born again. You are born again because although you are born again. You truly still, you have tasted of the power of that charm. Something in you still tells you it's working. So it continues working. The day a higher revelation and a higher anointing contents, it stops working a man of God one time was hungry and was passing and he saw a chicken that they had slaughtered for sacrifice he carried the chicken and roasted it and ate do you know why he never believed that that thing can do anything to him he said they shall take up poison who the believers believers in God 
not in miracles you believe in miracles but do you believe in god we're talking about knowing that god exists you know joshua selman exists but do you believe he exists let me tell you something you are a hypocrite if you claim to believe what is written here and don't believe the one who wrote it are we together oh i believe all things are mine do you believe the god who said it lord i don't believe in you but i believe in what you said does that make sense you don't believe in me but you believe in what i said no me and what i have said are one my word is my bond my word represents me when i'm not there you can take my word to represent me if i listen sam if you are dedicating an album and i stand before koinonia listen to me and i say joshua selman on behalf of myself i give you one million naira what is that that's my word now during if you go somewhere and you are doing your calculations you will calculate and say one million naira is coming from apostle have i given you the one million but you know me you believe in me it's up to you now to believe i can deliver it let me tell you what you do you first size me and look at me can apostle really bring out one million naira are we together so when you ascertain that i'm able to do it number two am i willing when you ascertain that you say i believe it so when god says i will bless you your own belief sizes him and says no god you are great but this triplet you are talking about don't don't joke with us so the cure is not just action the action part is hard we are coming to that but if you act upon something you don't believe is a waste if you believe in something and don't act is also a waste are you seeing how we are cleaning it up but we are starting tonight with the understanding of God his word his integrity say I believe in God shout it i believe in god i believe he is alive i believe he exists that's why i love the apostles creed the anglicans recite it all the time right i love it so much because it's an encapsulation it's called it's, it's like a statement of faith sometimes you need to recite what you really believe i believe my business can rise I believe my life can do this i believe my wife can get pregnant that's wonderful but do you believe in god there is no guarantee in scripture that if you believe those things they will happen he that believeth on me john 12 14 please give it to us we'll find somewhere and pray now john 12 14 john 12 14 the son of the living god himself speaking john 12 14 john 14 12 John 14 12 John 14 12 thank you read it please everyone one to read stop it is important who you believe not just that you believe who you believe Jesus never said if you believe on things you believe that things that will happen they will happen he says verily verily i say unto you he that believe on what on me i want your faith to be directed to me not my works not my works i believe all things are possible but the reason why i believe all things are possible is because of him that can make them possible the end of your faith should be tied to a person and his integrity not the things he can do restful confidence he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and what greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my father do you believe in him do you believe he exists sister listen to me you it's impossible to believe that fibroid will leave you until you believe in who the healer is are you getting what I'm saying man of god i believe my ministry will be great you are joking you are just playing games but i know whom i have believed and so i am persuaded in his ability that he is able the first thing is to believe the person then i am persuaded 
we leave the person and we believe in the ability and the things that will happen and we never get results he say is i see this happen all the time innocent people not taking out time do you know this is why intimacy is important with god intimacy does not help you believe things intimacy gives you an encounter an encounter furnishes the reality of god in you so that whatever he says is as good as him so you can believe jesus son of god i believe in you I believe in you. We call you a Messiah, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Sing it one more time from your heart. Yeah. When I lock up myself, I carry my Bible. I set an atmosphere that brings an intense presence of God. And when I lie down and open my Bible, number one, I am not reading for preaching. MOG, I'm not reading for preaching. I'm not reading for recitation. John chapter 1, verse 5, in this and that and that. And, and we no, 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 no. I'm looking at it. Jesus said, If you believe in me, and I sit down there. Holy Ghost, help me believe this truth. Jesus said, his presence is there. Jesus said, and in my mind, I'm looking at people gathered for miracle service. They don't know me. Maybe they are discussing among themselves, where is the man? And the man is there walking on his faith. Lord, I know you are able. I don't know what I'm going to see here, but I believe in you. There is no assurance anywhere physically, but I believe in you. And when I step and come right here and sit down, the moment the worship team finishes, do you know what I tell the Holy Spirit every time? I say, let's go. It's time to go and do this. As I climb this stage, I'm an ordinary man, but not alone. He's standing by my side. And so I can speak and make every audacious statement. And because of what is coming, listen, let me tell you, I believe in Jesus. I really believe in him. When he tells me something, I don't doubt. You will always doubt God till you encounter him. It's not the issue of I'm trying. Now, let me tell you, watch this. The body of Christ has fabricated a formula that if not careful, it will be our carnal attempt to recite and to 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 um, replace encounters is the concept a false concept of recitation of scriptures listen what we call confession comes from the word homologio meaning speak that which has been said i believe that there is a step to that but let me tell you what many people do we think that we just get up and start speaking I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I won't hear anything. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And you said, I said it hundred times. Listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope you understand. I'm just trying to correct us because we will soon get frustrated with all those things. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to my mind. No, listen, your mind was designed to submit. Your mind is not that rebellious. It was designed to submit. You have not created the condition for it to submit. The Bible says, casting down every yetzah, every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Your mind can submit. The mistake that we make is that we don't take our time to meditate. Lord, this shall not happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. But it's happening. It can't happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. It can't happen. Me, God forbid, I must carry my child. I'm carrying my miracle baby. Now, that is good. I don't have a problem with that confession. But what is the revelation behind it? What is the revelation that sponsors that thing? What you are speaking is not the word of God. What you are speaking is emotion. What you are speaking is fear. I can guarantee you most of what we do is a reaction to fear. It's just a spiritual reaction to fear or a spiritualized reaction to fear. Because, listen, if you are speaking right now and they tell you, 
your registration date is closing now for whatever maybe a job you need hundred thousand lord in the name of jesus i call forth help us they are coming hey they are coming oh, oh god they are coming watch this watch this watch this let me show you that it's not just faith it's fear they were praying for the apostles to be released from prison in the book of acts they were praying and asking that god will send angels god now sent the angels peter came out and they opened the door saw peter shot him back and kept praying that's what many of us do are we together no i can't find my wallet i'm a tighter what is this i'm a tighter i dropped my tight in koinonia oh god i'm a, I'm a tighter at least it's better than nothing but i'm teaching you restful confidence say restful confidence if you are to be honest you will know it's fear i notice the loudest prayer in koinonia is against the spirit of death and the calling of destiny helpers i have noticed it personally that every time i say everybody stand up and you know sometimes you can lead it seriously be serious i mean when we say go is like an arrow all kinds of where are your destiny helpers ah, where are they Praise the Lord. Can you get to a point where when you speak, you speak based on conviction? When you say, I shall not die, you are not helping yourself believe. An encounter has furnished a reality in your life and it's on the strength of that reality you say, I shall not die. How many of you prayed to sit down on your chair? How many how many of you prayed to sit down okay you need okay praise the lord are you hearing what i'm saying how many of you when you came through perception and understanding you knew that there are laws that were created by God to keep this chair. Who among you is sitting down now and say, Oh Lord, I really believe you. Ah, no, this chair, you can't disgrace me now. Now, does that mean you are not a believer for keeping quiet? That's how restful your life should be. You can sit down inside fire and you only talk when necessary. Because there is something you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please, I, I want you to believe what I'm teaching you. Otherwise, this series is a waste. I'm taking out time to pound on this because I want you to believe God. You step in and somebody looks at you and says, I'm your grandmother. Go and ask about the people I have killed. I vow that you will not see December this year. It's a vow. I vow that you will not see December this year. You now go back. Lord, is this how I'm going to go? What did I do? Who did I offend? Let me tell you what most believers will say. God forbid. Then later they will sleep and say, Kai. Kai. Now let me tell you. That woman herself is even afraid of you. She's but because she gave an attitude and said, I dare you. She left you with an attitude. You too, you claim to have the attitude. But there was no restful confidence after a while you say apostle um i don't know I don't mind i don't be it's not me but i'm just telling you so that you will pray for me it's still fear it's still fear the same way an intelligent student writes an exam he knows what he wrote and they'll just look and say do you know only four people passed the student may just feel an inkling of fear, but the student knows that even if it's one student that passed, I am the one. Now, he's not boasting out of nothing. He knows what he read. 
he understood it he cross-checked the question after the exam and he was absolutely satisfied it's called restful confidence the other person who does not really know what he did is now hoping that's why when he sees ah finally have you seen the best student lord i'm grateful i give you all the praise but i expected it this is how your life must be that you know god sister you are 34 you are not going to marry and all of a sudden you start going and say talk mountain to mountain valley to valley everywhere you start running all around and you just fidget there are many of us the moment somebody speaks to you someone just holds your hand and says for sinner i had a vision in that vision i saw cats eating you up for sinner does not sleep for one week are you getting what i'm saying now i will tell you what the problem is the problem is not the vision the problem is not whether it's true or false the problem is you if I look at you now and say, for sinner, you're a man. Will you pray about it? I'll tell you why. It's not just because God told you you're a man. There are too many things that have happened in your life to convince you beyond imagination. You don't just believe you're a woman. You don't just trust you're a woman. You know you're a woman. Notice the progression. I'm believing God. I trust God. I know my God. I know Him. I know him God it doesn't look like him I know him when can you say you know him that's what Moses knew he knew his ways though he slay me yet will I praise him because I know him I know him I'm trusting God to get to a point in my life where I don't just jack up my faith trying to believe God 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 oh Lord I believe in you oh Lord I... no, no 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 at that point you will move mountains you will join these elders brothers and sisters mountains will stand before you people will even pity you their eyes because they think you are dead at the end of it they will not see the mountain again and they'll see you shaking yourself that's how great people live in this life this ministry you have seen is here by faith by faith by faith by faith I've come to a point where I'm not trying to believe God I really trust him faith is based on the speaking of God trust is based on your experience with God you have had an experience with God there is a track record of his credibility so you can trust yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies we need to begin to walk by faith there are too many things in our lives that attempt to challenge our trust in God. But you must get to a point where you say, from today, I walk by faith. And the first encounter is to make the word of God real in your life. Look at me. The greatest investment you can make in your life is not having an education. The greatest investment you can make in your life is not just having good friends. The greatest investment you can make in your life is to make your life saturated with the word of God. Where you take the word of God as a project. You have given yourself a basis for true faith. Because there are mountains to cross. I like that Don Muen song. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord. let's take that part again though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. Listen, Koinonia, I speak to you. You are not the first to go through challenges. 
there are men on earth who have crossed this river they have crossed the river of barrenness they turn barrenness to triplets are we together there are men who turn being a pauper not affording 10 naira to giving billions to nations there are men of god who turn two members to nations you are not the first there are those who overrode the mockery of men it's time for you to leave the level you are in this life of pity oh god won't you show up for me no sir he will show up when you are ready though we are few you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song that we'll be singing forever oh so God puts his word upon your life Femi you will be great he will never do any other thing until you do something with the word you can sit there forever and die a failure it does not mean he lied the word of God does not act on itself by the time you look at your life my father is not doing well my mother is not doing well I came from a village please listen I am one of 17 children I am even the second to the last born. I am 35 years old. I've not done anything meaningful. You look at all of this and God says, if you believe me, God never gave men instructions until he revealed himself to them. The first assignment was to reveal himself to Abraham, revealed himself to Moses. Then he now sent them. They, every time they wanted to disobey, they remembered him. They remembered him the same way somebody want to tell you look there's one there's somebody that I saw in WhatsApp I spoke with him and he said he's looking for a wife and the way you have been desperately looking for a husband or a wife I think I can do a range for you and he said no problem God works in many ways I believe but that is not faith it's unbelief are we together listen make up your mind today that you will never take any action in unbelief until you stay and believe god this is why people who rush through things in life suffer they rush to start business they rush to marry they rush to enter a relationship they rush to do this do you know why when challenges push you you will not just look at what you are looking at you have to look at god you have to go back and say lord i know you all you spoke you said koinonia will rise you said you will give us a voice i believe you many graduates are holding their certificates roaming around the streets in nigeria angry the same people can bring notes for you when they were in 200 level they said god told me i will be great fast forward many years they are now holding they were never believing in god they were believing in that certificate they were just hoping that god was the certificate now that they've held the certificate they are moving around and you are asking them where were your visions where were your dreams you said god gave you courage god told you you will never fail brothers and sisters what has god told you leave what he has told you and focus on him the one who spoke i'm reintroducing to you today a god who is dependable i'm reintroducing to you today a god who had parted the sea this bible is a chronicle of his ability a chronicle of his integrity so that you will believe him away with all those talk we have mocked god we have cursed god because of our challenges i know there are challenges I never said there would not be. That's why I read you Hebrews 11. But I want to see your reaction. Show me your reaction under fire. And I show you whether you know God or not. Show me your reaction when things are not happening. And I can tell you whether you know God. Though he slay me. Will I be honest if I say I do not know him? I know him. I know him. He is dependable. If I die today without a miracle, I still know him. That's what made the people in Hebrews 11 
they knew him so much they rejected deliverance listen listen imagine for instance that God gives you two options in life just imagine and God says you will go through a season with me for six years and you will become so mighty or you will go through a season for one year you will start moving fast but you will not become as mighty as six years let me tell you what many of us will choose a bed in hand is what 20 in the bush oh god thank you for giving me this one year i can i can pay the price but there are those who know god and say lord even if it's 10 years let's go because one step in faith will give you 20 years worth of miracle one step in faith one step in faith have you not seen how god wiped the tears of people and changed the lives of people overnight men who trusted god koinonia i'm introducing to you a god you need to know before you start claiming to believe his word you must have an encounter with this god you must create the atmosphere for his word to be real in your life let it not just be talk 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 cheap talk talk no sir anything god cannot give me no man would claim to say he can give me anything god cannot give me that's why i can look at any man and say thank you for your open door but go with it god did not open that door and i will not go back to sleep and regret i believe god brothers and sisters look at me i have gone through mountains and valleys in my life make no mistakes about it don't you think i'm just talking to you from a standpoint of comfort i have gone through things that very few people can go through and survive i know that god is mighty by and large in life everything you trust will fail you and a time will come you will no longer hold on to things but a person pastors have called me man of god i've listened to your messages but nothing is working in my ministry and the first question i ask them is are you sure you are called and they say yes i said if you believe you are called did you hear what god told you they say yes i say stay there stay at the last instruction he gave you and die there there's a song that says i will be a good soldier he says i will die at my post if he does not shift a post let me die there i will survive the mockery i will survive the ridicule i don't have to be under pressure to explain things to people no it's not like this actually it's, it's, it's god that told me no. you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him koinonia please hear me faith the foundation of faith is an encounter with god an experience that furnishes the reality of him there are real mountains you will face you will face all kinds of mountains even the most trusted people in your life cannot take his place a time will come you will have to stand alone and say lord jesus i trust you i trust you though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever Holy surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing we'll be forever singing forever Faithful is the 
Listen. I want you to fall in love with your Bible tonight. Listen, please. Listen. Listen. Please listen to me. I know you have books in your library. Listen to me, please. I know you have books in your library. I know you have DVDs. I know you have CDs. But I bring you to a point tonight where you eat this word till something leaves it and enters your spirit. I have in my phone a compendium of the words of Jesus. Only the words of Jesus spoken. Only everything Jesus ever said in the Bible. Only it. I listen to it every time. I love the words of Jesus. I listen to it. Sometimes I let it run for hours as I sleep. And I have encounters. I wake up under certain intense dimensions. I know something happened. I don't need to know what happened. I know something happened. Are we together? I know that something happened to me. An encounter. I'm a very busy person. Just returned from a trip today. Tomorrow we're off for another one. You know, Eddie was driving me. We're coming from the bank and he asked me a question. He said, Apostle, do you ever rest? I may live a busy life, but not too busy for this. This is the most accurate picture, compendium of the dealings of God with men. I don't read, I read my Bible emotionally. I don't read my Bible intellectually. When I look at it, I see myself. If it be thou, bid me come. I, I, I replace Peter and I stand there. I look at all the challenges that are before me. There's a peace in my heart. In spite of all the darkness that surrounds me. And this peace that I know only comes alive every time i hear your voice there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light in my soul only comes alive every time i hear your voice listen Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear me. If you do not come to a point of restful confidence through the word, you will shake like a leaf at life. At a point in time, you will feel like dying. That's what makes people commit suicide. They get to a point in their lives where they move left, there is no way out. They move right, they are pressed to the core. And they think the only way is to drink, to smoke, or get a gun and blow themselves this word can minister the life of God to you this is ordinary scripture but the moment you begin to read it believing that out of it will come the word of God I assure you you will see miracles in your life and ministry sister I'm prophesying to you it's not over I don't know who said it's over but you take this Bible and recreate your future you have been predicting it by wishful thinking now create it through the power of the word you have been predicting it just by hoping hope is important it make it not a shame but let me tell you the truth if you must walk in any reality in your life you are going to have to create it i believe the word of god i know whom i have believed i have not followed cunningly devised fables i believe him it's time for every word that proceeds from your mouth to be a communication of faith. Don't speak until you believe. We having the same spirit of faith. It's called the operation of faith. We having the same spirit, operation of faith. As it is written, I have believed and so I spoke. I did not speak to believe. I spoke because I have believed. You don't speak to believe. You have an encounter to believe. Then you speak because you have believed. This is Bible faith. Time will fill me of Jephthah and Barak. 
men who through faith koinonia please listen they built houses by faith some of us have come where god has brought us today it is by grace through faith by grace through faith by grace but through faith it is not just by grace through wishing by grace through crossing your legs and hoping that because it's by grace it will happen you will never see any result there are two prayer points we're going to pray now and we're done for this night next week i don't want you to miss it i'm going to be teaching you the dynamics of faith how faith really works we're going to look at this thing in depth how do i translate desires to manifestations rise up on your feet we will rise in your name adonai you reign on high we will rise in your name adonai you reign on high and i will rise in your name adonai you reign let your first prayer point tonight be a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for showing me what I've been missing. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, thank you for showing me tonight that faith is not just wishful thinking. Faith is not just mental asset. Faith is not just memory of scripture. Although that is important. Faith is not just Bible study for a historical advantage. Lord, I thank you. Shabra tarato sobrekete. Ela kaparata kato shodo bregade balada 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 balada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, an addiction for scripture plant it in me. Listen, listen. There are some of us here as I'm speaking. For one month, for two months, you have not you have not opened this Bible. You have opened it in Koinonia. Listen, but to settle down. Some of us used to be really serious with studying the Bible. You just give God 15 minutes, just rush it. No, no, no. Listen. The goal is not to read the Bible every day. The goal is to be consistent. Life will not afford you. There are very few people, except those who use devotionals. There are very few people that can really afford to read the Bible every day. Five o'clock to six. It's a worthy habit. But not everybody will have that. Are we together? There are many leaders who don't study the Bible. I'm a leader. I know how hard it is to work with those routines. I'm a leader. I'm a man of God. Many men of God will lie to you. It's not every morning that I get up, I read my Bible. No, that would be a big lie. Many people will lie to you. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. 5.30, we're out of this town to catch up with a the flight. There may not be time. I may barely even have the time to sleep. I may just get up and rush and take my bath. But one thing I can tell you, when the Bible says, when you see the Bible put an emphasis, the key is consistency. The key is not religion. You can develop a habit that will make you consistent, like a devotional, like creating a time, morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, or any of them. But brothers and sisters, if you want to grow in faith, you are going to have to embrace your Bible and give God time. So I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, grace to give you time in my life. Lift your voice. Grace to give you time. Grace to give you time. Grace to give you time. Not to rush around my life. That I will seek you with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. 
I will find you with all my heart. I will leave my hands to you and worship. I will worship with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will leave my voice to you in worship. I will worship. Lord, I give you time. This is my busy life. Do something upon my life. Let me be a student of the Bible. Let me give time. Knowing that my faith. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Not a godfather, not a godmother. All I need is you, Lord. The fountain of favor, the fountain of wisdom. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. to talk about this but we are going to pray it all the same listen to me we are praying we are rounding up you cannot obey God until you know his will are you hearing me I will shift that to next week discerning the will of God but for now let me just tell you something there are two dimensions to the will of God there is his written will and there is his revealed will his written will is that which he has allowed to be written in scripture a communication of his desire it is it is not matured in the spirit to ask whether God wants you rich or God wants you alive there are scriptures that already show you it is his will Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts I think towards you said the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future so asking oh God do you want a good life for me it's not a wise prayer but there are certain dimensions of his will 
that must be revealed next week i'm going to teach you how to access the revealed will of god it is not written here that femi should be based in zaria it is not written that sam should be in london are we together it is not written here that a jimmy should marry hope it is not written here that eddie should be a protocol in koinonia but you will need let me tell you something one of the areas where people have marked time in their life they want to obey but the will the will the will i have studied this and i'm still studying it the ability to access the revealed will of god because if you act in disobedience it is still unbelief you have acted your action must be based on a knowledge of the will of god we're going to take off from there so i like you to pray one prayer with all your heart and say lord everywhere i'm still in confusion as to your will for my life accurate clarity reveal to me lift your voice and pray koinonia pray every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area confusion hallelujah listen listen every time you turn in the day of battle it is because you are in doubt of God's presence and God's way are we together the moment you are certain if someone comes to there and says, Joshua Selman, Koinonia is not the will of God. I'm not even going to pray about it. My God. There is a depth of certainty. Do you have that kind of certainty for your life? If no, stop running. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you by this message tonight, you should mark time a while. This rush is too fast. There are some of us by this teaching, just peg yourself and say the month of October is the month of discernment the month of clarification and the month of certainty tell yourself i'm not crossing october with these myriads of doubts in my life i am tired of believing god today it's like this is my husband but next week i'm in doubt again it's like this is my wife but next week i'm in doubt it's like god wants me to do this business but i'm in doubt it's like i i it's like i had it's like i had i had katsina i was even excited but now i've come back katsina we're back to sender it's like uh -uh, uh -uh. your faith will not be grounded that way open my ears to hear you and lord any confirmation it takes to make me know it is you give it to me lift your voice and pray these are simple but powerful prayer points any confirmation about your will Absolute clarity, absolute clarity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I remember years ago, there are many people I see today 
who I remember when you would ask them when they were students what will you do, be doing with your life they say serving God to the ends of the earth they thought they were clear right now ask them what are you doing with your life so oh boy Kai. he said I thought I had he said I beg it, leave all that one we were children that's why now that we're adults let's face the reality let me tell you when a man's life is like that please hear me between now and next Friday you should be able, am I going to be a man of God am I going to be a businessman am I a civil servant are we together this issue of allowing life to choose for you will shred your life into pieces so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else Jesus the possibilities is it true oh God that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and Lord I don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen I think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go is done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me I sang praise and worship I rolled on the ground and I stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what Naaman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me I just go and wash in a river I thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of God are not like the ways of men Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of God You have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and I made a vow unto God that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care, wasting their time will not be part of it. I made up my mind by God that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify. No, no, no. You should come twice to grow. You should come twice to learn. You should come twice to know God. But one encounter should be enough. It's true. One encounter. Apostle, I came to take fresh fire. One encounter. One encounter. I came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family. One encounter. One encounter. Apostle, my family members did not come with me, but they asked me to represent them. It doesn't matter. One encounter. The power of God. Master, he says, he told the centurion, let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army. He said, no, for I am also like you, a man under authority. I understand the stretching power of authority. I may be limited as a person, but the Roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government. So they may not be here, but the earth is still the Lord's. So they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach. And if you are a man under the authority of that owner, then the power of God should flow right in on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere. This I believe. This I believe. This I believe. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my situation. I've gone to the hospital. They have done everything. Jesus, if he said he was just healer, would have found reason to be afraid later on. But he says, I am the resurrection and the life. What is resurrection? Giving life to something that has no business having life. Resurrection. 
resurrection i am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor I will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually I conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that I do not understand I can reach back at the archives of your track record and say I may not know what you are saying but I know what you said and I know what I saw Genesis 21 verse 1 Genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real i testify i testify that your goodness is real and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did to sarah as he has spoken trust in the lord how do you trust in the lord take cognizance of his benefits be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust
a testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that god is able take your eyes away i repeat take your eyes away please take your eyes away from anything that is not jesus tonight and focus apostle they've prayed for me a prophet just like you prayed for me an apostle just like you prayed for me a pastor even conducted night vigils in our house i know and i respect god and i respect the grace upon that man except that one more thing i did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you the man must be sent there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent when the word of god passes you it does not bless you it is when it is sent he sent not brought he sent forth it was when the king sent for joseph that his life changed when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you moved around when i sent thee because every time he sends it his integrity is upon it tonight god is sending his word to me to you to us the word that lifts the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight hmm. it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken two men met jesus in m house and they began to discuss the messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed my assignment is to continue to study continually by the spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of god's power the power of god can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget it doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when i'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith 
but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of god then it is no longer the words of men john said i am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast go ahead and pray please inside outside lift your voices and pray are you praying lord i believe it is your divine power now i know how the results will come your divine power i know how the lifting will come your divine power i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. Yeah. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Senekatabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Seneke Prashd. Endele Gabrande Zedika Shobragadabaladabash. Krato Zazigadabarunde Ketosh. Embrakato Zaleke Pradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Variadabaladabash. Rakatu in the skemeritash. Rakaparuda siadabala dadaba. He barando jele karusi adabala daba. Please keep praying. hallelujah john chapter 6 john chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 john chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 
I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, not is like my flesh. Is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. 52. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man and in the blood of the Son of Man is his life that the life of the flesh is in the blood are we together now listen very carefully so that when you partake please keep that scripture when you partake of it with understanding the bible says that you are not just taking a wafer you are not just taking a drink but that you are you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of god next verse 54 Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, hath, I told you the word there is not eternal life. It's the word zoe. It's not the longevity of the life, but the quality of the life. And I will raise him up on the last day, 55. We're stopping at 56. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The last verse. He that eateth my flesh, this is it and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means come look at this Emeka come watch this if this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong his strength is her own too you understand that are you getting me not part of his strength his strength so if you say she's strong you are right are we together now this is very important now that means that when she's strong and he's weak her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just here open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the christ please pray by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing but i can't
blessed are you, O Lord our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words brings in the evening. Please pray one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary welfare and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. He says, anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. He didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion, representing all others that are not here. I decree, O oh God, that in a very strange way, may your power flow through this in the name of Jesus. Let it bring miracles. Let it bring all kinds of deliverances. In the name of Jesus. Whoever partakes of this tonight. In the name of Jesus. I declare. Instantly. May your power begin to rest upon them. Let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen. Let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus. Let deliverances. Let devils and demons begin to leave. Let doors begin to open. In the name of Jesus Christ. My flesh is meat indeed. We partake with understanding. We partake with understanding. Please make sure everybody, something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this. You will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion. Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-walking power, the wonder-walking power of Jesus, the wonder-walking power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit.
Please be patient tonight. God is setting people free. When there is understanding to your spiritual activity, then the power is released. The power is released. You will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already. Shalaka paruda seketa. My flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life. not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ 
Right now I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd inside and outside everybody under any kind of bondage I decree be free now be free now I command judgment on strange spirits in the name of Jesus the spirits of ancestry the workings of bloodlines and territories I come against you by the God of heaven where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is liberty listen we are still praying please pay attention I'm praying now the Lord is showing me families I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression nothing moves in that family you can go to school it doesn't make any difference you can get a job it doesn't make any difference have a business it doesn't make any difference I stretch my hands where are those people inside and outside I declare right now the power of God is coming upon you it's time for your family to be released at the count of three one two three be free now be free now be free now I lose your family I set them free I set them free Shamanda Kaskabarakata Embrekete Kaparoto Seteka Zeketeketeketekete Zebaka Proske Baruzasia Embrakata Lakatozasia Rakata Hemanda Barandos Kabarikata Surely there is an end, the Bible says. Surely there is an end. Even weeping endures only for a night. I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. you rise to a level and then you crash back it's a pattern that exists in families there's nothing wrong with rising keep rising but you plateau at a level and then you crash back I stretch my hands now this is what the Lord is showing me my God my God I decree and declare the spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame represented in anyone here the legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus I release such people right now be released in the name of Jesus be released in the name of Jesus overflow three please lift your hands the Lord is showing me something happening in overflow three overflow three please lift your hands mighty God mighty God I see a lot of attacks serious attacks on overflow three I don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there I'm seeing a lot of attacks at the count of three overflow three I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there overflow three one two three shout Jesus hallelujah I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside the gate of a prison like the front of a prison 
And I remember scripture says to open, to set at liberty them that are bound. There are people who are moving but are in prison. All sorts of prisons. Right now I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage, I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven leaves, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go out of them now in the name of jesus release their families release their spiritual lives release their finances paradox is a hasaka parodasia lembra ghetto scalaricious hebras kodash Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this role, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here. And I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here. Something is being removed out of people's stomachs. That's what the Lord is showing me. Just this role. I don't know what it is, but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the spirit of the living God. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I place the word of God upon that situation. It must let you go right now. The Lord is taking something out. I still continue to see this vision. God is taking something out of people's stomachs. The spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty I'm seeing the feet of a man and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains under chains this is what I see and the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families and i declare right now according to that which the lord has shown me in the name of jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the holy spirit right now something is happening to people i decree i decree and i declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty i command progress to your life move forward i push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress i forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now. Those who are fine up here can return to their seats. I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people. You don't have to bring the people out. I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again. Almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months, the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer. And my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. 
usher be discerning in the name of Jesus that lady is not yet free it's a realm of your grace I can see your mighty power moving in this place we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings and like the voice of many waters I can hear the angels sing you are holy you are holy you are holy Please someone to join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened I know there is advancement and I know there is speed but I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter truly let me tell you there is a real grace for speed and when that grace comes on you you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer the reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit I don't know why it happens that way be sensitive please and then it is of the spirit please don't ask me why it happens that way but if you will let me pray this prayer tonight God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month I know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments I decree and declare by the privilege of God's grace I stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father I pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three come upon someone one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I shift you speed 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 to your spiritual life speed to your finances speed in ministry speed in business speed upon your influence this is a major answer to your prayer I declare it again speed speed receive it receive it it is not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of God you can be picked up upon the wings of the Spirit and do things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard I pray it again those outside receive it those outside receive it I declare speed in the similitude of Elijah you will run and you will overtake the chariots of Ahab 
Alléluia. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually. This woman you are seeing, as frail as she may look, but the hand of God will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of God with power. I stretch my hands upon you and I pray that the spirit of God will perfect. Let there be a birthing, a birthing of the things that he has begun upon your life. A betting of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands I don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that God is bringing upon your life number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what I hear number two this speed that you see I prayed for is coming upon you I stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca please when you find the person i want to talk to her in the name of jesus christ we're going to pray for the sick Kai. This woman is outside. You are not inside. You are wearing a, a red like wrapper on your head. The same with what is down on you. Confirm. Confirm it. Mama, your name is Rebecca. Where are you? From outside? I will pray for you now. I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I want to pray for you. The Lord is going to honor you. I decided to take a pause because... Um, the Lord just asked me to stand here. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because I saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this. Just like that. Just out of someone. This is what I saw. In the name of Jesus, release this family now. Release this family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I'll pray for you. Your name is Rebecca too? Please come. I will pray for you. I found the person I'm ministering to, but I'll pray for you. From where, madam? From where? From area C. Area C. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. What's wrong with your back? Back pain. This is what it's I'm seeing. True. You get it's up true, in the morning and, and then you feel a lot yes, of pain. Sometimes yes. you cannot even wash. Yes, yes. Number two, your chest too. Yes, it's true. Severe it's chest true. around the breast yes, region. Yes, yeah. it's true. The Lord is setting it's you true. free right now, madam. Yes, in the name of Jesus, let it be over right now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I just had like a car crash in my ears. You know how an accident just happens right now. This is what I just had in my ears. And that the family that that should happen for is in this place. I'm going to pray right now. Be free now. I command death. You are a spirit. I judge you by the God of heaven. And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I want to pray for you, madam. 
in the name of Jesus Christ that God himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh? here. your children are here yes. where are they Isaac. Patient Isaac. And Sarah. this may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick there's a lot patience and Isaac yeah. now only no day here let me just pray for you if, if you are the only one who can represent them stand up please my friend mama I will pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ because I'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the Lord himself is bringing it so a very major breakthrough I have no business saying anything God did not tell me I've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well-watered garden that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you ma please hold my hands in the name of Jesus the breakthrough that the Lord shows me let it come and come speedily in the name of Jesus Christ you are her daughter let me pray for you my dear in the name of Jesus Christ they will not say there is something in your stomach growing huh? I'm rebuking something they will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one please hold on there is a growth there is a growth there is a growth this has been characterized by extremely painful your period is extremely painful but more than that there is a growth just around your abdominal area overflow one you don't have to come out the power of God is touching that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ my dear in Jesus name by the Spirit of the Living God we declare your liberty complete total final in jesus name i pray praise the lord now we're going to pray for the sick praying for the sick takes a lot of time our time is already gone i i bless god that there are a number of hands tonight now listen we believe in the power of god to touch people to lift people and most times you would notice in my external ministrations i don't have time to minister to people one by one but because this is a miracle service dedicated for that the lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city and it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of god extend to people we'll do it very fast um all of the overflows all of the overflows i would request that you just move those trusting god for healing particularly please i would request that you move to the front of your projector screen that's where you are going to be prayed for um the ones that spill over do i call that overflow five now i will just request you to be patient we are going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the god of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel there will not be space just come stand it doesn't matter you don't have to come in if you're outside just go to your overflow please hallelujah myself alongside the men and the women of god represented here will be praying for you look how many people are trusting god to touch them hallelujah now please you don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak just let them minister to you if there is need to speak any words they will let you know praise the lord there are so many people this night and so we we'll do our best so we can gain time and just just line everybody here and then we'll pray for you praise the lord
of what you prayed for. Just be patient and allow the men of God minister to you while that is happening. Our time is already gone. Please stretch your hands. If you've not submitted your request, um, you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you, especially for those outside. You're yet to submit your request. Just stretch your hands right here and let us agree. This, hold on please. This is not religion. This is not tradition. This is not a ritual. This is a mystery. It's a revelation. Let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service. Because when we have the form without the power, then it will not bless us. There have been many, many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here. And um, since I'm the only one here, let the men of God minister to you. If you are still being ministered, to just focus on the ministration. But then for all others, just stretch your hands towards me. And let's agree that these Egyptians we see today, that we will see no more. Please agree. Release your faith and believe we are praying. We may not be able to prophesy to you personally. We may not be able to give you a word of knowledge. But this is a representation of your heart, your pain, your desire, your expectation. The Bible says, and thine expectation shall not be cut short. Stretch your hands and let's agree. There is a God that answers prayers. Shabaradagataparakotos. Karuzas Yamaha Karuskadesh. Lekate Prekete Sida Baladas. Is someone praying? Online pray. The overflows pray. Father, we declare. We are declaring as the church. We are releasing an anointing. The divine power of God upon these requests. Some of these requests are death sentences. Some of them are humanly impossible situations. But unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Zakosh kamaranda kaparuza zekatapariya katalakosia. Zekes kebranda katopra asada katabala dabaka. Rekete katabarada bakato barato zaziana kata. Shkala baranda kaparuza ziana kata. In the name of Jesus we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people. We decree and we declare. Makratos kalambre de keparuza ziakata bradiash. Ileperetos zaziakata baranda gadash. Kritos kalabarakata baladabush. Shalabaranda kapurus. Liketeketekete baradabash. We decree and we declare. Manda prados kaziza hash kalabaranda kata. Arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy. Give your people testimonies in the name of Jesus. Jiprakatos, Kalabarakata. Believers pray, we are agreeing. Likato Janana Katabarados. Jabros Katabaranda Kata. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Hela barakata sosa brende kedebash. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare supernatural workings of miracles tonight. We declare healing miracles. We declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus, we declare supernatural interception, angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles, diverse walkings of miracles. In the name of Jesus, we declare creative miracles. We call new organs, we call new jobs, we call for children. We call for deliverances of families. 
We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles. By the divine power of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your, the heavens are open in the name of Jesus. We thank you for creative miracles. We thank you for money miracles. We thank you for supernatural deliverances. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus. Special miracles uh, in the name of Jesus. Diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus. Angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus. Great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on, always looking for people to prophesy on. So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. The grace, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. The grace that makes for a new level of visions. People have lost visions in the body of Christ. We tell lies that we are seeing, but we are not seeing anything. Father, the eyes that see genuine visions, let there be a restoration. Let that mantle fall upon someone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit, the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. That prophetic river locked up within your spirit in the name that is above all names. The grace for the prophetic in a new dimension. Who is this grace coming upon? Mabato Zabarakata Embreketeta Upon all flesh, he says, I will pour out my spirit. Receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus. I believe in miracles and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders. I'm stretching my hands. I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing. Just like a bird hovering around. 
in the name of Jesus Christ upon as many whose hearts are open father the anointing the real anointing for signs for wonders inside outside especially upon men and women of God I decree and declare let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now in the name of Jesus fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group I say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of Jesus the spirit of wisdom there is a spirit of wisdom it says doth not wisdom cry wisdom speaking says with me are he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness i declare the grace to know what to do is called the spirit of wisdom the grace to know what to do let it come upon you right now let it come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now please help those under the anointing talabarus kanamahashanas I want to release favor the grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom there is a grace for favor I testify to you people of the living God there is a grace for favor it is not of him that run it nor of him it is not of him that that um, run it what's the scripture we net not of him that run it but of the Lord that showeth mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion and the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her yea the set time favor will take away hardship from your life not just financially even spiritually I decree and declare Zakapo Shambra Kapo Zeneash receive the grace for favor it's coming upon you receive the grace for favor receive the grace favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business in the name of jesus every geography has its favor may the favor associated with your geography if it was on the rocks the king built on the rocks it was an advantage if it was the sea they channeled the water for productivity every territory has access to favor i declare that the favor a portion for your territory let it rest upon you right now i want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this i confess to you sincerely under god that by the privilege of god's grace i'm a student of the word but i can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you I'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of God verbatim I declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness i believe there is a grace for wealth i believe it 
I believe there are principles for wealth. I believe there are understandings that can bring resources. But I believe there is a grace. There is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings. When that grace came upon Saul, three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one. In the name that is above all names, in this season that God has ordained for the body, that in addition to the prosperity of our souls, in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation, let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, I believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction. He said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. Don't touch this one. There is something upon it. I decree and declare, let the mark that exempts men from terrorism, from kidnapping, from assassination, from accidents, the grace that exempts, receive it right now. For you and for your family, receive it right now. Receive it right now. I declare that whatever you have lost coming here, it doesn't matter how long, please believe, release your faith. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I command a sevenfold restoration. I command a sevenfold restoration. Restoration of anointings, of money, of ideas, of relationships, of access, of illumination. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every ministry represented here. Whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders. I declare by the power of the spirit, shift to a new dimension. Shift to a new dimension of teaching, of the miraculous, of the demonstration of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will multiply them. They will not be small. I will glorify them. They will not be few. Whatever keeps you small, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, that power is broken over you now. All those trusting God for jobs here, yeah. you are trusting God, you have agreed with God, and said, Lord, settle me, give me an honorable job. I release my faith with you and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that by this time next month let it please the Lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business father the grace that came upon Tyre and Sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth. I decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value. The grace, the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus. Whether for you or for your loved ones. We agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names. It's called the power of the highest. That can put a seed in the womb of a woman. And keep that seed until it delivers. May that grace and that power come upon you now. We cause barrenness. We cause impotency. In the name of Jesus. Whoever has what it takes to favor you. 
the Bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power I declare whoever has the power to support you the power to help lift you we compel them by the spirit to favor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray in the name of Jesus we're rounding up the prayer and fasting many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually I declare the fire of prayer that can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of Jesus every attack on your prayer life Shagapo sana kaparagados Reketele kotosobadia Let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now In the name of Jesus Christ Receive the grace to travel Receive the grace to pray Any evil and wicked company an association around your life you are not free till your association is free I declare to you you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people who do not fear God I declare a separation between you and the wicked I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying Lord what is the next step in this season should I stay here or should I go the Bible says and thine ear shall hear a voice listen let me tell you one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return I declare accuracy of perception in the name of Jesus Christ that the God of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we're done thou shall anoint Aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows this is not in a competitive manner but I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men from the crowd may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. Let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life, we release them. Listen, listen. Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain. It returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place. Then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive an almond tree, an olive plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established I pray for you every long standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life I declare right now in the name of Jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now.
anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed, may God answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting. I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face. Return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God. Return with the signs, the wonders, the transformation, the illumination. Return with the evidences of an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize. But we thank the Lord for the encounter tonight. You will live to testify. Very quickly, please let's, let's settle down. Very quickly, please just help that woman so she doesn't injure anyone. There are people here. Please listen. Overflow one, two, three, four online. There are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight. And whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the things that the Lord did in this place, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need Jesus. Jesus is not an idea. Jesus is not something and someone you can do without. I believe with all my heart that, and please prepare to clear the way for them. Overflow one, two, three. If you are at the door, please shift. There are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, if you will make an altar call, I need Jesus. I need him desperately. I need him truly. There are others who are saying, I love Jesus, but for whatever reason, I need a restoration and I need my life back with him. Whether you belong to any of these categories, please, inside and outside. I'm only going to count five. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. It will be my joy and delight to lead you to Jesus. Don't wait for someone to come before you be the first. I'm counting. One. Come quickly. Come quickly. Koinonia, let's honor them. Let's motivate them as they come. Please clear the way for those who are coming from outside. Two. Apostle, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them. Join them. Join them. Join them. I come from a Christian family. Am I born again? No, sir. Join them. I have very good friends. Am I born again? No, sir. Join them. The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are anyone's coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I receive your life I receive your grace and I declare please help them and I declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever Jesus is my Savior is my Lord is my friend I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare 
that I reign in life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. 